please welcome ARM VP of Marketing, Eddie Ramirez. Good morning. It's great to be back in the beautiful city of Lisbon and great to see so much support from the European community for OCP. I'm here to talk about an important topic, which is how we scale infrastructure for the age of AI, and how do we do that in a sustainable manner? At ARM, we have a shared mission, shared mission with the OCP community and with OVH, to be able to deliver innovations that will help transform infrastructure for the age of AI and make it so that we do not minimize the impact on the planet. I'd like to start with what's now seeming to be almost obvious. AI seems to be everywhere. For many of us, our first experience with AI came with ChatGPT, and it's no surprise. Almost 200 million people have downloaded that application. It's become the fastest growing app in history. If you're a software developer, you're probably also using AI. 30% of software generated today is being generated on AI-assisted tools like Copilot. So the productivity gains for AI and the potential for that to improve efficiency and innovation is great. But at the same time, we have to think that AI is not just for tech companies anymore. 50% of all large companies are actually kicking off AI projects. And it's pertinent in fields like healthcare, retail, professional services, and manufacturing. These are the industries that are quickly adopting AI. VCs are also very excited about AI. Last year alone, $50 billion were, were put into startups for AI. It's an incredible number, and it's showing the confidence that VCs have that AI can be a future growth driver. And so all this excitement of AI is going to require new hardware, new ways of powering compute. AI accelerated servers are actually the fastest growing segment in the market today, growing from 30 billion last year to 150 billion by 2027. It's a tremendous opportunity for many of us in the audience who are servicing this space. But we also have to recognize that today, AI is expensive. The hardware comes at a premium, and the power consumption that's being generated from AI workloads is immense. There is a better way to look at deploying AI. And what we have to recognize with AI is that this, this exponential gain in compute resources that it, it is consuming today. I use some data from Hugging Face and CMU to demonstrate an example of how to calculate the potential carbon footprint generated by AI workloads. They took several different AI-assisted tasks and analyzed those down to the particular amount of energy and carbon that they generate. Tasks like image classification, text generation, and image generation, all things that I'm sure many of us have done with ChatGPT. And what they've found is that as new capabilities come to market through large language models and generative AI, the compute resources that are used by those tasks is growing exponentially. And it's not just in the training of the models. It's actually in the inference workloads inference will become 80% or more of the compute resources attributed to AI. And so now, if we take text generation, for example, which is at the heart of chatbots, and we assume that that's going to end up in so many products, in so many services going forward, we can actually calculate the impact that that could have. And it's quite astonishing. The total energy just for chatbot-like services alone could use the entire power grid capabilities of Portugal. And if we think about more advanced capabilities, like image generation through multimodal models, it is only going to get more, worse. There's just not enough electricity on the planet to be able to drive broad use of these services 
with the current infrastructure in place. And so there is a better way. ARM is working together with other partners to deliver silicon innovations that can help improve the performance and the power efficiency of AI compute hardware. We're seeing today a proliferation of custom silicon. Large hyperscalers and technology companies are helping to design workload optimized silicon to deliver more advanced benefits when it comes to power efficiency. NVIDIA, AWS, Microsoft, and more recently Google have all announced ARM-based server products that they are releasing into the market that they have co-designed to be able to effectively increase performance of key AI workloads. They're pairing these server CPUs with accelerators as well as networking processors to reimagine and reinvent the data center infrastructure to meet this upcoming demand. And when I think about AI accelerated servers, there is no one size solution. AI data centers will require both CPUs and GPUs to effectively scale AI compute performance. I think about these as sort of the cars and trucks on the highway analogy. They're both useful. GPUs require a certain amount of threshold of compute, a lot of AI inferencing jobs batched together to be able to fully utilize the hardware. GPUs are also hard to come by and can be quite power hungry. And so there is an opportunity for CPUs to play a big role in AI inferencing. And at ARM, we're doing our best possible to make generative AI as performant as possible with every generation of ARM Neoverse CPUs. We are now showing, for example, the Llama 2 7 billion parameter model running on our most uh, recent Neoverse V2 processors with over 20% performance improvement from the prior generation. So we're effectively almost up to 300 tokens per second in performance for chatbot like features. CPUs are like the Swiss Army knife in the data center. They're highly available, flexible to use, can run a variety of workloads, and now they're becoming more cost effective and energy efficient. Another key innovation that's helping with the proliferation of AI computation is quantitization. In an essence, quantitization is using less bits to represent the data, allowing AI compute to be able to run with less resources and a smaller memory footprint. That is important because that will enable AI to run on edge devices, endpoints, mobile phones, even appliances. If you look at the amount of silicon that ARM shipped last year, or that contained ARM technology last year, it was over 30 billion devices that shipped with ARM compute processors. Most of those devices do not reside in the data center. So another way to use the scale of that amount of compute is to be able to drive more performance in endpoint and edge devices for AI inferencing workloads, and quantization is helping. We can now run 7 billion parameter models on Raspberry Pis and mobile phones. Another way that we can improve the efficiency, not just in the data center, but at the edge. And so ARM is working within the OCP community to drive new microscaling data formats so that we can have AI inferencing workloads run from the cloud to the edge and make it easy for developers to be able to access and utilize their code base on a variety of hardware. Another area for innovation can come down to the way that data centers are designed today. And there are several projects in OCP that are focused in different parts of the ecosystem, from modular server design to composable memory to even cooling environments. There are important, important efforts in OCP that you should learn more about. Take advantage of the two days we have here in Lisbon to learn as much as possible, contribute, and see how you can benefit from these activities. Because it's going to take a both a hardware and software co-design model to give true 
innovation for the next generation of AI data centers. And I'd be remiss being here in Europe to not talk about the European ecosystem. There are several initiatives that took place over the last couple of years that are all focused on growing the strength of the European ecosystem and the semiconductor ecosystem. From the European Chips Act, which is aimed at delivering twice the share of European semiconductor shipments, to the European Processor Initiative, which is, has 30 companies and research institutes working together to redefine HPC and AI hardware, and even the EU Artificial Intelligence Act, which is working to bring trustworthy AI to Europe. Many industries will want to be able to trust AI before they deploy it broadly. And all three initiatives are going to have an impact in strengthening the European technology ecosystem. We think a key technology that will also help when it comes to sovereignty of supply chains is actually chiplets. And ARM is doing as much as possible to advance key chiplet technology. Chiplets have a tremendous benefit. They can lead to higher yields, reduced NRE. They're also going to lead to reusability. It's going to be able to bring a lot of partners together to be able to compose complex silicon for infrastructure and be able to give startups and companies new opportunities to be part of that. Yes, there are challenges to chiplets, but we can work in a collaborative fashion to resolve some of those. ARM is committed to enabling a diverse chiplet ecosystem. We have contributed chiplet system architecture standards, which we're working with the industry and collaborating around. We've also taken our, the very popular ARM Ambachai protocol and enhanced it to be able to work over chiplets. And we contribute to OCP initiatives as well as UCIE initiatives to advance key chiplet technologies. But that's not enough. And so at last year's OCP Summit in California, we announced a new program called ARM Total Design. We're bringing together industry leaders throughout the semiconductor supply chain to better enable and lower the cost of custom silicon. So that custom silicon does not need to be only for the biggest cloud providers. And I'm excited that at this summit, we're announcing three new members into ARM Total Design. Nokia, a leading 5G infrastructure provider. Cypro, who's delivering advanced HPC and AI silicon. And Calray, who is developing complementary AI accelerator chiplets for the networking environment. All three companies have a shared vision to be able to advance the chiplet ecosystem here in EMEA, and by doing so, develop a sustainable and sovereign supply chain. So now, ARM Total Design, in just six months, has increased to 24 partners, and many of those partners have big footprints here in EMEA. We're developing centers of expertise. We're working across all three foundries to prove out new technologies. Effectively, we're going to be able to de-risk de many of the designs today. And we're working with companies on chiplet interop activities. All important to deliver silicon innovation that can power the AI data center. And so I leave with sort of three calls to action. One is encourage everyone to work together to deliver meaningful AI compute efficiency. The time to act is now, and the time to innovate together is, starts here at events like this. Second, encourage everyone to work to strengthen Europeans' leadership in key technologies like semiconductor design. Support those initiatives, support the vendors. And third, as I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, with 50% of large-scale companies now looking at deploying AI, it's going to be your investment decisions that matter the most. Be informed and look at hardware that is able to deliver sustainable and scaling compute performance. It's great to see everyone here today, and thank you very much.